Hey guys, welcome to another video, and in this video I'm going to be talking about an underrated comedic film called Rat Race. By air. I just wanted to say hi to my boyfriend. Did I come in a bad time? By whatever it takes to get there first. Squirrel? We're looking for the interstate. Now they've lost their way. All oh, I make Cracker Jack pets. Hey, who wants to go home with the nice ladies, huh? Do you or do you not know where the interstate is? This summer. How about a pit stop? There's a bathroom in the back. The latch is broken. Anybody could just come in. You ain't got nothing the other Lucy's haven't seen already. Not necessarily. Make a dash. Yes, the movie Rat Race came out in the early 2000s, and it is a slapstick screwball comedy starring Mr. Bean's Rowan Atkinson, uh, Monty Python's John Cleese, you got The View's Whoopi Goldberg, you got Robot Chicken Seth Green, you got Brecken Meyer, you got Amy Smart, you got uh, John Lovitz, like a lot of huge cast members in this movie, and a lot of very, very funny people during this time period. And it's a remake of the old classic film, It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World. It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World is an amazing film. I really, really enjoyed that film. It's a great, amazing slapstick comedy about people going for this money and this treasure and stuff. And they made, they made a more, I guess, modern remake. But the best thing about Rat Race, I it, it is the same story as It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World, but it is such a different film with such different characters, such a different story. Like, the ma like the major plot, yeah, is the same because they're still racing for the money, but it's such a different tone, and it's a different film. Yes, It's a Mad, 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 Mad sorry. <laughs> it's a Mad, Mad, Mad World is clearly a better film. Like, I'm not even going to be competing the two because there's no competition. The classic is the best. It's an incredible film. But Rat Race doesn't get a lot of love. Like it is a very funny film with some very enjoyable characters, and I don't see a lot of problems with it, uh, other than the ending. I, I, I hate the ending. I think the end. I'll get to it, but I, I think the ending's stupid. I think it's a stupid way to end the movie. It's a race, people, and make someone win the race. For Christ's sakes, that's what I wanted. I want someone to win the actual race. Uh, but yeah, the movie even starts off with some pretty funny jokes and funny introductions to these characters, and I really, really enjoy it. Excuse me, uh, what's this, $110? Uh, those are your in-room movies. No, I didn't watch any movies. Okay, let's see. Afro Whores. Afro Whores? You watched it, let's see, uh, 11 times. No, 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 wait. Afro Whores 2.30. Afro Horse, 4 o'clock. Afro Horse, 5.30. It says in the morning you watch The Grinch for 10 minutes and then switch back over to Afro Horse. I, I swear, I didn't watch it, okay? I was at a bachelor party. There were 35 people there. You can ask any of them. Okay, you, have to, you have to take that off my record. This is not a record, sir. You have to delete that. Okay, fine. How many times did you watch it? None. I didn't watch it. Are you sure? Sizzling three-way backdoor action featuring two sexy soul sisters. No, and I don't need to know what it's about. I did not watch it. Yeah, instantly when we were introduced to these characters, the, the characters that I loved the most was uh, I loved Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character, that he's like this football ref that's like hated by everybody because he doesn't know how to do a toy cost properly. And I love Seth Green and his brother, who are like these con artists that steal money from people and try to rip people off. And I love Seth Green's brother has his tongue pierced and it's all infected, so he can't even talk properly. He talked like this through the movie because his tongue is swollen. And it's very, very funny. And I love John Lovitz is with his family, and he clearly just wants to gamble and have a good time, but his family wants to have a family vacation and stuff. 
We're also introduced to like Brecken Meyer's character who's there for a wedding. And we're introduced to Whoopi Goldberg and her daughter. They haven't seen each other in a long time. They're just meeting up for the first time. Uh, we're introduced to all these like interesting characters. Uh, and they all go to a slot machine and they win a golden coin. And it's basically to enter this rat race, this race. Uh, so these characters, you see this like all these clips of all the main characters finding the coin in the slot machines that they win. And then they go to the board meeting where John Cleese is holding it. And then we're introduced to uh, Rowan Atkinson's uh, Rico Panini. And he's just like, I found a gold coin. And I just, <laughs> I love him. In this. So yeah, after that, uh, John Cleese enters the room and his name is Donald St. Clair. And he owns the casino that they're all at. And basically he asks them all to sit down, sit down. And he gives them these golden keys. And he says, these are golden keys that open a locker. In Silver City, New Mexico, which is like this big gold mine place. And he put in a locker, 001, in Silver City, New Mexico, in a certain train station. He put $2 million in a bag. And he's asking all these people to compete in a race to get to the money. First one who gets it keeps all the money. And that's the story. That is about these people that are racing to Mexico to get $2 million in a bag. And just a lot of hijinks ensue. It's just, it's fantastic. The introduction is very strong in this movie. They introduce all these characters in very, very enjoyable, funny ways. And there's no, uh, there's no right or wrong answer to which character you want to root for because they're all shady in their weird ways. But they have, the, they all have this charm to it that I, just, I, I love. This is what I love about these characters, like. John Lovitz is clearly not the most likable guy, but he's just so funny and just so relatable sometimes. Like, I mean, I, I feel this guy's pain, man. And the fact that he has to do the entire race with his family, and they have no idea that they're in a race. They, they think they're going for a job interview for Home Depot. <laughs> it's just like, what? It's great. And I love the brothers, Seth Green and his brother. And I love that they just basically the whole race is just jeopardizing everybody else's chances of winning it's it's so great it's super great and i love uh roman atkinson that he has uh he has narcolepsy and he just falls asleep at just random moments it's it's so great it's very 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 funny and then he teams up with wayne knight because wayne knight hits him with his car and then they realize they're both going to mexico so they both go together it's it's just a blast it's just the race itself is great. There's also even a love story with Brecken Meyer's character. He meets Amy Smart, who is a pilot, a helico helicopter pilot, and she basically can fly him to Mexico, and he, that'll give him a huge head start because they all try to take a plane, but because Seth Green and his brother can't get a plane ride, they basically destroy the communications for all planes to take off. It, it's a great scene, actually. It's a very good slap. And then that all begins the race part. Everybody finding different ways to get to Mexico. And that's where all the comedy is. It's, it's hard to talk about all the jokes because me telling you the jokes or explaining the jokes doesn't make the jokes you doesn't make the jokes funny because you have 
to watch the movie to experience the jokes. The situations and the stuff they go through is very, very, very funny and very, very enjoyable and very, very fast paced. And you don't know who's going to win the race. And it's really, really, really good. And uh, some of the people who have some of the best stories is Cuba Gooding Jr. Like this guy who lost money in the football game that Cuba Gooding Jr. ruined. He's transit in the middle of the desert. Then Cuba Gooding Jr. has to take a bus driver's clothes and drive the bus. It's just it, it, the bus is full of these women who are all dressed like Lucy from I Love Lucy. <laughs> it's just what? And then uh, Breck and Meyer and his brother go through a lot of chaos and stuff. And then Whoopi Goldberg and her daughter take a rocket car. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? It's, it's crazy. And um, I love Roman Atkinson and Wayne Knight in the movie. And then Wayne Knight has like a human heart because he's supposed to deliver the heart to Mexico because someone's getting open heart surgery. <laughs> and then Roman Atkinson accidentally knocks the heart out of the car. <laughs> then Wayne Knight tries to kill him and cut out his heart. I'm like, Ooh. It is The situation is crazy. But the funniest situation in the entire film, and it's probably the funniest joke in the entire movie, is John Lovitz and his family. His family stopped by a museum, and it's the Barbie Museum. <laughs> So they stop by because his daughter wants to go to the Barbie museum. But really, it's about, like, General Barbie, who was a Nazi. And it's a Nazi museum. It's like, oh. And then, basically, the brothers uh, basically rip his engine out because they stop by the museum and stuff. So John Lovett steals Adolf Hitler's car from the, the museum and drives Adolf Hitler's car to Mexico with his family. It's... It's nuts, like, and there's a joke that happens, and it's a joke that would never be used in any movie nowadays. Like, people are so snowflake now. Like, they, they would never use this joke, but this joke, and I'm going to show you, is the funniest part of the whole movie. It's so, it's great. Just, just watch. You just don't see that anymore, you know? No. I wonder what this is. Honey, careful, that's a cigarette lighter. No, I don't think they had those then. Yes, they did. Ow! Oh, honey! Oh! Did you burn yourself? Yeah! Oh, I told you! Oh, God! Oh! <laughs> no, 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 oh. no, 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 sorry. <laughs> My I... husband, he burned his finger, ma'am! Yeah, he was cooling and then Help. he was waving. Help. Not helping! Oh, oh Not sorry. helping! Hi! Hi! <laughs> oh. I really like your dyke! Bye! Like that shit is funny. That shit's hilarious and stuff. And so I don't want to spoil too much that happens throughout the race part, of which is a lot of the film, but because it ruins the jokes. I'm just going to talk about the ending. Like, I love this movie. Like, I, I think it's a well-written movie. The slapstick in this movie is hysterical. It is so funny. It's funny slapstick. Uh, and the characters are enjoyable, and you root for these characters. And I really, I, I every time I watch this, I grew up with this movie. But every time I watch it, I always have a great time watching it. Great film. I'm going to talk about the ending. There's one part of that the ending that is hilarious. The first person to arrive at the at the locker is Roman Atkinson's character, Enrico Pellini. And he puts his key in, and then he falls asleep. 
<laughs> like just when you thought the movie's about to end, you're like, oh, we finally have a winner. He just falls asleep. <laughs> Super funny scene. And then the rest of the people all show up at the same time, which I find is coincidence that they all showed up at the same time. And then they open the locker and the locker's, the locker's empty. Because Don St. Clair's assistant basically stole the money with a hooker. <laughs> Don't ask. And they basically chase him down. And they end up going to this, like, stadium. And they all grab the money and stuff and everything. Then they realize they're at a Smash Mouth concert. <laughs> like, what? And basically they give all the money away to charity. Because it's for charity. And they get confused. The people at the concert, they think the $2 million is for charity. And then they say, no, it's not. But then they see the starving kids and they give the money to charity. And then it's all happily ever after. And then Smash Mouth sings the all-star song. It's really great. However, I don't like that ending. It's not about Smash Mouth. I love seeing Smash Mouth. But it's the ending. I wanted there to be a clear winner. I, I know it sounds like a dick. But I, I wanted there to be a clear winner. Even if they all shared the money at the end of the movie... I still think that would have been kind of lame, but it's better than just giving it to charity. I don't know. I think it's kind of a cop-out ending. And I wanted there to be a winner to the race because the movie's called Rat Race, and I wanted someone a winner to a race. Why does someone watch a race to see who wins? I didn't even care who won the race. I just wanted to see someone win the race. So that was huge. Every time I watch Rat Race, I always get disappointed with that ending. I'm like, ah. the whole movie is so good, but just that ending, I hate. I don't like that ending. The whole movie though, is really good. It's very underrated. And if you guys haven't checked it out, please check it out. I highly recommend it. It's a super overlooked comedy. And it doesn't get a lot of praise critically. It's like a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. Pfft, they don't know what they're missing. Great film. Definitely recommend it. So in the comments section below, please tell me, are you a fan of Rat Race? Do you enjoy this film? Do you think it's underrated? If you've never seen it, check it out. Then give your thoughts and opinions. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, like this video. Please subscribe to the channel and join the duck side. <laughs>